If you are vulnerable to psychic damage from roguish language, stay away from these gibbering mouths. But if you intend on listening to this podcast about enriching your fantastical group hallucinations, you're too far gone already. Your next game is going to be relentlessly monstrous, and here's why. In this episode, we find some answers to how do we make trolls more than just a bag of replenishing hit points? And what flavor can we add to a troll's mental and physical abilities? And how does one run a horrific troll encounter that really sticks with the party? Welcome to the Hook and Chance podcast. I'm Jordan. And I'm his brother, Travis. And we're very excited about trolls today obviously which is contrary to the way we really should feel because trolls are nasty uh i was gonna go with boring (laughs) okay fair they are monster with one unique ability slapped on well here's the problem is that i as a party member hear my dm slap down a troll however that be maybe it's a mini or maybe it's a a photo that they pull up and be like this stands in front of you and i go oh holy shit that's scary look at this thing this is gonna be a crazy fight oh my god what am i what are we gonna do we're doomed and then we spend the next uh 70 to 80 rounds (laughs) chipping away at the hit points of this fucking thing Unless you know it's secret, in which case it's done. You burn it. That's it. Fight over. (laughs) So, obviously, the troll has some inherent challenges baked into it. And it really requires a nice DM finesse to really make this creature pop. And we've done it plenty of times without any of that finesse, you know? Well, the best education one can get is in the school of hard knocks. <laughs> yeah. I even chained mine down, which was a real mistake. Not only do you have this bag of hit points, but then you chain it in place. Yeah, so we could just take pot shots. <laughs> do you want to grind? <laughs> All you have to do is chain a troll in a spot. I mean, it's so grindy, it feels like the woods outside of Stormwind in World of Warcraft. Just a slog. Yeah. Well, that's why we thought long and hard about how to make these beasts live up to the expectations that one has when they think of a troll. A troll is a cool beast. It should be more than just a slog. I mean, when you really sit down and consider what a troll is, this horrible, bumpy, tough clawed, toothed, angry, regeneration monster, that should be pants soiling upon first sight. That's some terrifying shit right there. So it's not cool that these things do not stick the landing. So in this episode, we're doing it a little bit different because we usually have two segments because we throw something fun in at the end. But there's a lot we've got to say on trolls for some reason. (laughs) So we're going to consider their mental and physical traits and then turn trolls into a great horror-themed adventure in Lamash 2's Breeding Pit. This is Lamash 2's Breeding Pit, where the most vile and deadly of creatures are birthed and unleashed upon doomed adventurers. If you're listening to this podcast before actually playing 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, thank you, I suppose. (laughs) But it's a little strange. Go and play. The point is, uh, we'll give you a quick recap on the troll, if that is the case. Weirdly enough, they're related to giants somehow. Or maybe they're just falling into that class. They're considered chaotic evil, so they're unpredictable. You never know what a troll is going to do next. They got some beefy hides, giving them a 15 armor class. To top that off, they've got a pretty deep well of hit points at 84. Like, for early adventurers, this is not a casual fight. 
if you're anywhere between like first and fifth level, like this is going to be a challenge. Yeah, you're not throwing this at your first level party or you're a dick. They can't outrun you with a speed of 30 feet, but that's okay because they got some other strengths. Their literal strength score is 18, which makes them hella strong. Their bite and their claw attacks should feel like it hits like a fucking train. Yep. Their dexterity is 13, which is still above average. Their constitution, though, is 20, making them virtually impossible to poison or gross out or make hurl. Well, it just means that you can feed them the raw chicken that has been sitting and stinking on the kitchen counter for a few days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they'll, fine with that. They'll eat your garbage disposal for sure. <laughs> they'll just slap that between two pieces of bread and call it a sandwich. <laughs> Slime and all. Delightful. To be balanced off by their intelligence of seven. Which, sure, means they're not book smart, but they're still smart enough to be uh, terrible to you. Absolutely. And they actually balance that off with a wisdom of nine, which is just a shade below, like, the average human, which the average human is capable of quite a bit. Yeah. Especially if they're malicious, which means that they know how to fight. They're reflective. They think about things. Like, they sit there and they stew, and they get angry about stuff. So with the wisdom and the intelligence kind of combined together... They should not be as dumb as we typically think trolls would be. Yeah, they're not absolute idiots. And like you said, when you mix together a below average person and uh, terrible intent, you're starting to paint a picture. Yeah. Then you mix in the wonderfully high charisma of seven. Like I've met less charismatic people in my lifetime. <laughs> yeah, I've been less charismatic in my lifetime. And then you toss on abilities like dark vision up to 60 feet. Now this thing's a nighttime predator. Like we're getting into some weird shit. This thing is starting to creep me out. Yeah. Its stats let you play it as a terrifying monster. And it speaks giant. To add to the point that it's not just a mindless beast, it speaks a language. And then we get into its unique abilities, which are keen smell. It has advantage on perception checks that rely on smell which is kind of just like some fun flavor to throw in. It's sniffing around for you. If you need this monster to find your players, it can find it. It has the ability in the dark to sniff out and spot you no matter where you are. Yeah. Then you throw in its ability to regenerate. That's the big one. It just gains 10 new hit points on every turn. Unless it takes acid or fire damage. And that's pretty much it. The troll only dies if it starts its turn with zero hit points and it does not regenerate. Now consider this for a moment. It regains 10 hit points every six seconds or a turn. Its total hit points is 84, which means you could slice and dice this bastard down to its raw components. And in real time, this thing is healing back up and building itself, putting itself back together in under a minute. Yeah. That is nightmare fuel. That's bad. You either figure out how to kill it or get out of there real quick, and then you got something hunting you because you did bad things to it. And just imagine this, all of this kind of coalescing back together and slurping and slapping <laughs> as all of these <laughs> tendons just build themselves. Like, that is scary shit. Yeah, that's why you have potential to gross your players out if they're into that kind of shit. And while it's doing that, it's slashing and biting you three times in a turn. Yeah. Like this thing goes for the mall. It is furious and fast. So let's break it down a little bit more. Let's start with the mental capabilities of this troll. Well, we already mentioned that it's got seven intelligence. So, you know, a little bit below average. But I think it'd be kind of neat for them to have deeper connections to that giant culture because... They are a subtype of giant, and they speak giant. So, I mean, D&D &D meant for that to be. And all of the folklore of the world suggests that as well. Yeah. So if you're curious about what we have to say about giants, we've got episode 83, Roleplay Giants with Culture Creation. But if we're talking about a basically subculture of giants that got booted 
from giant culture because maybe giant said trolls are creepy and gross and we don't like them and we don't want to talk to them anymore. Well, think of the familial connections of giants. Hill giants are still (laughs) the most hated of the giants, but they still get a seat within the ordning. They're still recognized as giants. How awful and how shitty do you have to be for even the giants to be like, you are not a giant. You get the fuck out of here. Yeah. And I would imagine as a troll, I would hold a pretty massive grudge for being booted from the giant table sitting next to my cousin, the hill giant. I mean, I still hold a massive grudge, and just because I don't have children yet, I still have to sit at the kids' table at every family reunion, so... Yeah, that's our burden to bear. (laughs) (laughs) Better stop pumping out those babies. (laughs) But on the other side of that, they're also not going to be welcomed by any humanoid cultures, at least for most fantasy worlds. I mean, just the stink alone means that within, you know, a couple of kilometers of town, everyone's like, "Uh uh-oh, troll coming near. And with all of that, I mean, this is a semi-intelligent monster that's getting rejected from all sides. This, honestly, is the creation story of a lot of supervillains. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Regeneration capabilities, (laughs) long-ass teeth and claws, ousted from their own culture, Hated by the rest. What happens when you put all of those together? You do not get a pleasant creature. You just get a creature that hates everybody, that can't get any positive attention at all in this world. And so, like, what are they going to do? They're just going to lean in. They're going to go hard in the other direction and try to be vile to everyone they come across. They know they're never going to be the best at anything, so they might as well be the best at being the worst. And that creates just such a loathsome creature. Like, I cannot wait (laughs) to play another troll and just really up the ante in terms of what horrific threats could this thing pose to the party. Yeah. And if I were running one, just to kind of remind myself, I'd give it a few clear values that trace back to that. I'd go with vindictive, malicious, and spiteful. If you're communicating with it, everything it says is just dripping with that hatred. Yeah. Yeah. If they encounter a party, they want to destroy it. If they see from a distance, from an, an opposing hillside, if they see the party laughing on the road, that is... Like, this is the Grinch. The Grinch (laughs) was hateful from his mountaintop. This should be every single troll times 10. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when they encounter any kind of life, wildlife, they just want to destroy it. They want to destroy everything they come across. Use that. And when they encounter humanoids, other creatures that can really truly appreciate how awful they are, When there is another creature that can feel fear and disgust in a way that humanoids can, well, that's an opportunity. Yep. That's an opportunity to really show the world what you're made of. I mean, much like an internet troll, when a person is looking at them and going, oh, gross, they just, they just play it up. They start ripping out their guts or something. Yeah. I mean... Wow, that actually kind of carries, because it doesn't matter how many times you cut them down, they seem to just put themselves back together. Trolls (laughs) are very aptly named. Yes, (laughs) yes they are. Which leads us to diving into that regenerative ability and everything we can do with it, because that is some fertile ground to roleplay with and to describe. So let's talk about the troll's physical characteristics and what it's truly capable of in a physical sense. Now that we figured out how spiteful and awful a troll could be, starting with that regeneration, like that is the biggest and most interesting feature. So it's really important to consider how a troll thinks when it knows it can't lose. How do you mean? Well, throughout a troll's lifetime, anytime it's been in a scrap, it's come out on top. If a troll goes toe-to-toe with a bear, even if it's the biggest, baddest bear in existence, if that bear tears it down, shreds it up, it regenerates and kills the bear anyway. 
So it wins every fight that doesn't involve fire, which is 100% of them so far. <laughs> Touche. I mean, yeah, you kind of have to knock it down, then kill it with fire, then make sure it doesn't... Re- like, there are so many steps to make sure a troll stays down. So it's got some serious street cred in its own mind. Yeah. It is wildly confident. And it will not stop trying to kill you because that's how it wins. Yeah. So the part that I find really interesting is the visceral sense of this healing ability. Yeah. There's got to be a good way to telegraph to the entire party, to players that know or even players that don't know, about the troll's regeneration, you need to hint at this beyond just like either not saying anything. That's one option is you just keep adding more hit points and the players get tired and angry because they're wondering (laughs) why the hell they can't chip away at this thing and they're getting whittled down. Or you've got players that know about the troll's ability and they're just expecting it. Or you're actually outwardly telling all of the players at the table, I'm adding 10 hit points. It looks 10 hit points healthier. (laughs) And all of those are just not great approaches. So we need to find a way to really telegraph to all of the players, level set, and get them afraid of this monstrous ability to just completely start to piece themselves back together. Yeah. And I was super excited about this too. And the first place I went, of course, was the natural world. Natural healing abilities that exist in the wild. I know we're about to delve into some creepy territory. But let's start simple. We've got dogs. We all know friendly dogs. Okay. Poochie's best friends. Less creepy than I was (laughs) anticipating. Are you about to ruin dogs for me? No, no, no. I'm about to ruin trolls with dogs. (laughs) (laughs) So researchers at the University of Florida at Gainesville discovered a protein called nerve growth factor in saliva. You may have heard of it. It helps heal wounds. That's why dogs are always licking at wounds. Huh. That's gross. Does that exist in human saliva? Like, should I be licking my wounds? I'm pretty sure a doctor would tell me not to do that. That is correct. Okay. So I do not have this (laughs) nerve growth factor. Yes. And do not take advice from this podcast. (laughs) But I will say... Uh, Don't let your dogs lick your deep wounds. That's also not good. Okay, I just need to stop and clarify. (laughs) Do take advice from this podcast, as that is the only reason this podcast exists. Right, right, right. However, do not take medical advice from this (laughs) podcast. (laughs) Certainly that. All correct. So I'm picking up what you're putting down. Like a dog licks its wounds. A troll just slops gobby saliva on any last oh, hit nasty. in between. It's kind of like a bonus action. You know, the, the ranger just slashes at its forearm as it was reaching for it and then just gobs this long snaky tongue down its arm. Yeah. It's putrid mouth opens and all of this <laughs> slop comes Gross. out. Oh, things are going to get worse before they get better. Okay. What else you got? Then we go to cats, another little pal of ours. Well, it can't be worse than the dog. (laughs) So there's a thing called vibrational therapy that at certain frequencies can help to heal bone and muscle. Interesting. Pretty wild. And cats, being all about energy and how to conserve it. (laughs) This is the lazy (laughs) shits they are. Exactly. But the real purpose of it being so that they can hunt real good and real quick, there's a theory that cats her as a self-healing mechanism. Interesting. Using that vibrational therapy, essentially. That's where they get the mythos of being sturdy as hell, having nine lives and all that stuff. Huh. Maybe that's connected. They're constantly self-healing through purring. I'm no cat doctor, but that sounds cool and logical. So if we were to make this ability more monstrous in line with our trolls, I'm picturing like a deep gurgle. Like there's wounds in their throat as they're doing it or something. Like it's really yeah. unhealthy and like... Yeah, it's kind of gurgly and bubbly and it has that kind of quality to it. But I think we could even amp this up. Because again, going back to them having dark vision, being able to sniff things out. If this thing retreats, the players are screwed. Like this thing heals, like we said, in under a minute. Yeah. 
it is back to full health. So if it were ever to retreat mid-battle and disappear into the darkness, all the players are hearing. They're making this disgusting, guttural, bubbly gurgle in the distance somewhere as it circles them. Something that makes you sick just hearing it. Yeah. Then we come to the African spiny mouse, who are really good at regenerating their skin. I mean, you've already upset me with regeneration of skin and spiny mice. Yeah, yeah. That can't be a good image. Well, so, yeah, regenerating their skin. Not a fun image. Why do they do that? Because their defensive mechanism... No. ...is to let predators rip it off. Ah, Why? <laughs> Why did they evolve oh. so painfully? <laughs> oh, that can't be fun. Nature, you are a cruel asshole. Yeah, yeah. We don't think of that when we see a cute little mouse. So I'm thinking, weapon attacks on a troll tear off plenty of skin with each pass. Like, your troll's skin could kind of just be loose and sloughing off. Like, they don't care, though, because it's regrowing the quickest of all of their regrowth ability Ooh, yeah it's just patching itself together real quick well and we all know that as a player it feels good to feel like you're doing some serious damage yeah and to describe this troll having pieces huge swaths of skin just slabs of muscle and tissue just falling off of it feels good as a player because you're like damn i'm doing some serious damage we're killing this thing then to describe it regenerating faster than you can hack it off? Yeah. That's some uh-oh territory. Like, that w is what triggers some serious dread in players' minds. And just as the nasty cherry on this cake, I'm imagining a uh, troll pulling it off themselves and throwing it as a no. distraction. <laughs> no. <laughs> Why not? Or, you know, getting grappled. If yeah. anyone has the guts to grapple a troll, that troll gets away very quickly. I mean, coyotes will gnaw off their own leg. Yeah. A troll doesn't give a shit. It'll be back in five minutes. Just sheds its skin. And here's another fun creature. This one's getting a little weirder. You may have heard of the axolotl, the little salamander looking guys with fuzzy little gills. I cannot say I have. Okay. Well, they're very adorable and they only live in a certain part of Mexico. They're pretty rare, but they can regenerate limbs, skin, and bone. A lot of lizards regrow their tails. Yeah. This sounds like it's more, though. Well, it, it is, because you've got all of that category of lizards that we've all heard of that, yeah, their tail gets gnawed off and they just grow a new one. That's some big inspiration for trolls, I'm sure. But these axolotls can do a little bit extra. They can restore parts of their brains and hearts. What? So your party's, you know, stabbing them in the soft spots, in the important spots, not bothering them. So you're saying two in the chest, one in the head. Ain't going to work on these trolls. Okay. Yikes. But that's not all. What's really a jaw dropper? Dubious scientists have figured out that you can take an axolotl leg, stick it to a different axolotl, and it'll attach itself. It'll just borrow limbs from other creatures. It can. Uh-oh. Well, not other, <laughs> not any other creature. <laughs> Specifically the same type that it is. That axolotl has <laughs> attached its head to a bear's. <laughs> oh, no. But, yeah, think about that for your troll. That is horror territory. Bear head? Human arms? <laughs> <laughs> but you're absolutely right. These freaky scientists also stuck an axolotl's head on another one's back. And that worked too. What? It lived. They lived. However you want to. Oh, no. Yeah. That's some troll spiration right there. So what you're saying is potentially, if a troll were to, say, beat another troll, that it could maybe take limbs as a trophy that it just sticks to its own body? Yeah, why not? Anywhere it wants. Its knees, its feet. Yeah, okay, spider troll. That's truly <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> yeah. Four legs, four arms, crawling on walls, shit. And I think this is pretty cool because 
you can imagine changing its mechanics slightly to reflect whatever creepiness you come up with. Like it's got two bites or it's got four claws. It's it's attacking more or, you know, it's got more armor because it's just slapped more troll onto its troll. <laughs> <laughs> you want some troll on your troll? Have some more troll. <laughs> we got four trolls, five trolls. But you can create these custom mechanics however you want. And it's kind of like what they did in Mordenkainen Tome of Foes, where they've got a pretty powerful troll stat block in there that is this concept. It's got like a handful of claw attacks and a crazy amount of hit points. So anywhere between troll and mega troll from that book, you can kind of customize to your heart's delight. Hell yeah. So what else he got? One of their other notable traits that doesn't get a lot of attention is their thick skin. This is where the armor class of 15 comes in. Yeah, essentially that's all it results in. I mean, they're not wearing armor, but most clerics have to wear some like full plate to get up there. Yeah, it's not a bad armor class for sure. So I was thinking, you know, trolls have kind of that leathery, crocodile-y kind of skin. So that's where I looked. <laughs> this is going to be good. <laughs> well, crocodiles and other foul beasts of the swamp and places like that, essentially have bones underneath their skin. You know how a crocodile's back has all that bumpy bits? Yeah. Yeah, like it's got fancy technical terms, but it's just little chunks of bone under the skin. Jesus. And I'm going to say that's perfect for the troll. Give it those ridges of bone. Yeah, and it's got little spurs all over the place. Yeah. Like that's why it's so hard to get your blades through, because it's bouncing off of exterior bony chunks. Well, would it not make sense then that every single time it regenerated, maybe it got a little thicker in that place? That's the way this ability is really meant to function, is the more places that it gets damaged, the thicker it regrows, and it regrows back, and it gets kind of bony, and it gets kind of hard. All of that ends up in really massive forearms that are just covered in these little bone spurs and kind of armor plating. Same thing with its legs. Yeah, it's using those bits it normally blocks with and they're getting better and better. That makes sense. And then that becomes an insult. Stop fighting like a young, thin-skinned troll. <laughs> <laughs> and all of this brings me to Gustav, the massive crocodile living in the Nile. But this is a terrible creature that truly was bad for a lot of people. He's the biggest, meanest croc out there. Like, just to give a frame of reference, how big is Gustav? Well, I can't give you an exact number because nobody's ever been close enough to know for sure. Because if you get that close, he's going to take you down. Yikes. But he's theorized to be longer than 18 feet and heavier than 2,000 pounds. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> Oh, we're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> yeah. And the crazy part, this is the most dangerous crocodile out there, but it's not the biggest. There's been bigger crocodiles. Yikes. Anyways, it's theorized that he's even too big to hunt regular crocodile prey because they're too agile for him. So instead, he hunts wildebeest and hippos. Hippos. Yikes. They're Hi big. And they're mean. Like hippos yeah. are supposed to be dangerous in and of themselves. They are. And of course, it hunts people. Terribly, it actually hunts people. Yikes. Soldiers report opening up a clip from an AK-47 at Gustav. There was one story where they reported even shooting him with a rocket launcher. <laughs> <laughs> and that didn't kill him. No, it did not kill him. Certainly Gustav was happy about that because it definitely added to his legend. So your troll is Gustav, but standing up. There are stories of a troll that is just menacing and some of it is maybe tall tales but other stuff is all directly linked to just how big and mean and tough and thick hided this creature really is equivalent legends would be things like a few wizards going out to try to tackle this thing you know it threw a couple of spells at it they barraged it with magic missiles, didn't do anything. Well, and how many people would maybe have even fought it and escaped with their lives or even thought that they killed it? Yeah. Like a party of 30 could go out and try and overwhelm it and they killed it and they stabbed it and they sliced it into little bits 
And then it was back the next week. Yeah. Terrorizing travelers and traders. Looking meaner and uglier than ever. The final bit to play with, which isn't totally unusual or unique for monsters, but they do have dark vision. And they're not intelligent by any stretch with that seven, but they're still smart enough to enjoy hiding in the dark, taunting and torturing any adventurers that come by, and taking great pleasure in inducing fear. Well, as a hateful, spiteful troll, would you not want hunters just out of your area? Like, you could have any meal you want. And so adding to the legend, and not necessarily attacking, but like you say, taunting and torturing adventurers by hunting them in the dark, terrorizing them, this is what asserts your dominance in a region Yeah, that says, this is my turf, you stay out of these woods, everything is mine, and if you come anywhere near me, I will destroy you. Or at least, like, ruin your time, because you just made me think. Hunter's out there trying to hunt some food for her family, and a troll shows up just to tear apart their kill and defile it. <laughs> just spits on it. Makes it yeah. inedible from yeah. troll spit. Yeah. Steals some parts of it, doesn't eat it, whatever. Just means that you're having a real bad day and you just got terrified by a troll. Uh, all right, so if we didn't make this thing horrific enough, then we can try applying the horror matrix from Ash Law. You can find a modified version of our horror matrix on our website under the resources tab. Or if you're also interested, you can go all the way back to episode 27, The Bones of Horror, where we did a three-part series on how to build up horror in your game using these exact steps that we're about to put the troll through to really hone in on its capabilities. This is where all of the uh, brainstorming finally comes into effect. The general gist of the horror matrix is that we want to go through each individual phase in its own time. And we want to bounce back and forth between these distinct phases to really build up tension because all good horror is based on tension and making sure that the players feel tense and terrified before the game. If we just slap a troll in front of them, that's not really going to sell it. So we need to move players through these distinct phases of establishing normalcy, creating unease, adding some dread, then jumping up to terror, and then finally horror. And that's the stage at which we want to introduce the troll. So we need all of this groundwork to be laid to really sell this creature. And in each of those stages, it's a lot easier to generate ideas when you think of them in the three basic types of horror, which are psychological, gross out, and unnatural. Especially for monsters, I think we're going to be leaning a lot on the unnatural here. <laughs> I'd like to lean on the gross out personally for the troll. So prep yourself. Here we go. All right. So in order to really sell it, we need to start with that established normalcy. So what's in our normal category? How do we really sell and counterpoint all of the horror that we're going to start coming up with? That's the thing. It needs to be in contrast to all of the nastiness of the troll. So psychologically, you're going to have a kind community with truly good people in it. And you need to add things and people. And, you know, I like where you're going with that, that idyllic kind of village, because the more children and bread makers and just nice humanity. Yeah. That's what we need to really sell before we introduce a troll. Good smells. I like what you said. The baker. <laughs> good smells. Good, <laughs> good things happening. <laughs> Pies and scones and blueberry jam and just yep. all of those wonderful smells. And being greeted by a couple of NPCs that are just happy to see adventurers come through. This community is going to be a bit on the cleaner side, too. Yeah. We need petunias in every window. It's a well-maintained place. So then we jump into unease. Now, this is just kind of dipping our toes into, huh, something could be off. I think just to keep it simple, we don't know what quest you're sending them on, but let's say there's a, a nearby pass that you need to travel through to get to the other side for whatever 
MacGuffin you got. MacGuffins galore. Yeah, whatever your players need, it's across that pass. Yeah. To create that sense of unease, people are uncomfortable talking about the pass. They don't even want to acknowledge it. This town, they know it's nice. They don't want people going through that pass. They might seem a little bit apprehensive to even talk about it if the players were to ever mention it. And if you've done your quest with some kind of a ticking clock, your party has to get through the pass because it's the quickest way to the other side. The townspeople are saying, go around the pass. <laughs> go over the pass. Any other way. Don't go through the pass. Hey, I've got this brochure for the town south of here. You don't need to go north. <laughs> Yeah. They've got a great farm. They've got the world's largest pitchfork. Have you seen it? Yeah, it's much better than a trip through the nasty swampy pass. For gross out, when they do decide that they've got to make it through quickly, they're coming closer to this pass. They come across a dead predator of the wilds. Like, uh, say, a massive crocodile like we talked about. Ooh, what is so awful that it took down an apex predator? Exactly. And this predator was clearly killed for fun, not no. for food. Oh, that is even worse. Yeah. That really sells it. When the ranger gets down and takes a look. Nothing's been carved off of this. Yeah, you sell that to the ranger? Ooh. Choice. Somebody's going to be pooping their pants. <laughs> So then we hop into Dread. So we need to really start to sell this. All right, things are getting fun at this point. Psychologically, I think you could have somebody stumbling their way out of the swampy pass in oh. your direction. They just had a run in. Now, a super powerful part of any good horror movie is that scene where they're talking about the monster as this perfect, terrible predator. It's called the speech and praise of the monster. Mm. And I think you got to drop one of these in right in the dread phase where they come running and stumbling out. They were about to get got from a crocodile, but then this terrible abomination of a troll popped out of the swamp and tore it to bits. This green beast that stood 10 feet tall held a crocodile above its head and squeezed. Ew. I barely had time to scramble away. This thing was a perfect killing machine. I mean, it was no time at all. I think we might be bordering, though, on spoiling the horror. I wonder if this traveler didn't quite see it, but all it heard was the screams of this animal in the distance. Very good. The wailing of a crocodile as it's getting torn to bits. That ain't good. You know what's worse? What? And I hesitate to say it. It truly upsets me, but the whinnying of a horse. Mm, you monster. I know. I know. It's <laughs> awful. It's awful. The traveler's horse. Yes. Yeah. The traveler was knocked off of their horse, and they just had time, if not thanks, for their trusty steed. Potato pie. No, you just ruined it. You just undermined the emotional value of this by naming <laughs> it potato pie. Yeah. Sweet potato pie. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. Thanks. All right. What else can we do to build some dread? Well, here's another really nasty one for the gross out category. I think if a troll wanted to create its kingdom, if we talk about its regenerative ability, uh huh, then maybe the troll... Are you ready? No, but go on. Uses its own intestines to create a... Nope. Canopy. No. A vine-like canopy. No, no. <laughs> to block out the light and to stink to no end. Still no. Oh my god, that's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really one of my worst. Especially when they start arranging it to make some terrible artistic scenery in the canopy above you. <sighs> so, I can make this one level worse. All right. Keith Amon the author of The Monsters Know What They're Doing, has a fantastic post on trolls and the way that trolls fight. What he talks about in his post is he kind of acknowledged that trolls are not a ton of fun to run because they can just be a bag of hit points. 
He suggests using the loathsome limbs alternative trait, which means that any limb that gets lopped off or cut off still has the ability to move. Therefore, an arm that is lopped off still has the ability to make a claw attack. Nice. A head can't move, but it could bite. Yeah. Well, it could roll, perhaps. <laughs> and a foot can't move or attack. Right. So these loathsome limbs still have life in them. Now, all of that terrifying, awful. But when you mix it with your idea of this troll festooning its own guts all over a swamp, they are all moving and undulating, oh. even though there's no wind. Yeah. And there's arms in the mix. And there's little claws that are just reaching. And, and maybe that's even some like low level fights that they get into to whittle them down a bit. That's pretty gross. Just just arms falling from the canopy above and just latching on to you, scratching at your face. Oh, that's good. Good one two combo. And now you hear the low rumbling of this thing's gurgly, disgusting, regenerative noise. Yeah. And before you know what it is, it's almost like an earthquake getting closer. It's not too distant, but it sounds sinister. Like there's something out there that's excited to be on the hunt. Oh, no. And that moves us directly into the terror phase. Things are ramping up. We're getting to the point just before the monsters reveal that, you know, Emotions are heightened. So, for gross out, maybe you find other trolls' bodies in the swamp. Like, you're going up against the apex troll. These other ones, maybe they're still alive, but they're pinned into place. All of the parts are pinned too far to grow back together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, you just hear this cacophony of disembodied troll voices <laughs> all over the swamp. Yeah. And then we launch into horror. You're finally face to face with the troll. What can we do to make that moment better? For the psychological portion, I'm thinking it's going back and forth between speaking common and repeating the things that people have said before they died Ugh. in kind of a broken, like not good common. Yeah. And then going to speaking giant and insulting relentlessly and badgering anybody that speaks giant. Yes. And as it lifts itself out of the murky swamp to face the players, it rakes a massive claw across one of its ribs, opening up a fresh wound and then sticking a full another troll's arm to that spot just to watch the tendons and mucus, pull it together. Yeah. Roll for initiative. <laughs> That's giving me some fuel for my next troll. I sincerely hope you've got some ideas for yours too. I feel like my troll could be so much better than I've ever run before. If we use how it thinks like a vile outcast and then how it physically mutates and regrows like yeah. all of the nastiest parts of the wilderness and then chunking it all together into a horror encounter that nobody's going to forget? Hell yes. That is a story that the players are retelling again and again. And they're feeling pretty damn great after they beat that troll. Did any ideas come up for you while we were going through all of this? We would love to love love to hear them did any kind of nasty troll that you've ever run in the past really make an impact on you we would love to hear it you can reach out or comment or however you like but we would love to hear some of your ideas and a huge thanks to all of our patrons that make it possible for us to sit here and theorize about trolls <laughs> i see spiders where there are none sean J, the senate lucas d Lila G, the GM Tim, Nevermore, Thomas W, Ty N, Heavy Arms, Eric R, Aldross, Leprechaun, and Will HP. You're the best. Thank you all so much. Thanks to Tabletop Audio, as always, for the sound effects that you hear in this episode. 
You can follow us at Hook and Chance on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and Reddit. Send us your troll ideas. And you can join the community of ever-growing players and DMs on our Discord and get better ideas from them. We really appreciate you sharing this episode, sharing any episode that has been helpful. It helps the podcast grow, and hopefully it helps more players and DMs get better at the hobby that we all love so damn dearly. Thanks Thanks for for listening, listening and and save Potato Pie! (laughs) That horse didn't deserve to die!